Well, we hope everyone is enjoying our beautiful spring weather. Um, we had our first picnic outside on the patio this weekend, and that inspired us to start to think about barbecuing and, and all the fun foods we get to serve when we have a barbecue. So today, this is Denise and Aaron from the University of Wyoming um, Extension Office in Niobrara County in Lusk. And we're gonna share with you a really easy way to pickle some onions. And we call them purple onions at our house, but a lot of people call them red onions. And purple onions are a great condiment for hamburgers that you've grilled and um, a lot of times you have a huge purple onion because that's usually how they come. And so you slice up a little for your barbecue and then you have all of this purple onion left over. So this is a great way to utilize that onion and, and keep it um, good and food safe to use. Um, and also a really tasty way to to alter this onion just a little so you're not always having to have them just on a hamburger. So um, the one thing that we'll start out with, and you wanna show them one of our jars. Yes. Um, even though they're put up in canning jars, this is not a form of canning. This is um, a refrigerator pickle recipe. And so you cannot Put them in your water bath canner. This is not an approved recipe. And um, so it's great to use fresh or it's great to use two weeks down the road in your refrigerator, but it is not made to can. So recipes that you get off of Pinterest or Facebook or those kind of places or from your Aunt Martha's best friend, um, they probably are, haven't been approved through the USDA, um, so they cannot be canned safely. So use them as they were meant, as a refrigerator recipe, and, and enjoy them that way. And that's, whether it's a jam or a jelly, um, there's lots of really cool recipes out there um, that would make great, you know, and they make four jars and give them to your friends and tell them to keep them refrigerated and enjoy them that way, so. So what we're gonna start with is, um, Aaron is going to be our slicer today. <laughs> and what we did when we made the other batches is we sliced them two different ways. We sliced them so you'll have lots of pretty rings. And then the other way we sliced them was just up and down, so you have chunks. And so you can do them either way that you would like. Um, we thought the rings made a prettier jar when they were done, and we could actually get more in the jar slicing them into rings. Um, she's gonna show you how to cut them using just a knife or um, a special tool, which maybe some of you don't have in your homes, or maybe you have one and have no clue what to do with it. So she's gonna show you how to do the mandolin, which will slice every single slice of this onion exactly the same depth. And usually for any kind of um, food preservation or pickles or that kind of thing, you want your pieces uniform in size and shape so that they um, either can the same or marinate the same. And you guys, you just wanna make sure you're peeling it back. This one had several bruises in the skin, so I went down um, a layer to get the really nice looking um, onion. And that's with all types of any type of food preservation, whether you're canning it, freezing it, um, pickling it for the refrigerator, you wanna make sure you use really nice produce, nothing that's bruised, um, beat up, that kind of stuff. 
So Erin is going to quickly run to the sink and um, wash this off. Um, our onion was grown on the ground, so you really are in the ground. So you want to make sure that you have eliminated as much bacteria and foodborne um, illness um, particles that you can. And um, right before we started, which we didn't mention today, we both washed our hands really, really good. And that is, again, very important when you're doing food preservation or cooking of any kind. And we washed all of our surfaces really well, and we're using all clean utensils. So what I did when we made the first ones Friday is just um, use a sharp knife. The sharper, the better, the easier they slice down. And I'm doing fairly thin um, rings. I'm going to do the first half like this. And then the other method is just with the mandolin. So, uh -oh. my onion's about bigger than my mandolin. And with the mandolin, we'll hold it. It has a V slicing blade in it. And um, you can regulate how thick or how thin you want each slice to be. The, the thing Erin is holding on to is a hand safety guard so that your fingers can never get close to that V because this is super duper sharp and it will slice your fingers. The other thing that um, if you're still leery, these are um, like chef gloves and um, they are made to use with this type of equipment. They're Kevlar, and it cannot slice through here. So if you have a, you know, an aversion that you are going to get hurt, then get one of these. And even if you want to use this while you are cutting with a knife, a knife will not cut through this glove. And as you guys can see, that mandolin made really short work of really nice, um, thin slices of that onion really quick. Probably the worst part of the mandolin is just cleaning, taking it apart and cleaning it. Um, but it does make that whole process really, really quick. So we've got some eyes in our onion and I'm gonna just take those out and not put those in the pickle. I guess maybe more personal preference than anything. Um, when, then we'll make um, the syrup to go over the onions. And what the recipe recommends at that point is you leave them at room temperature to get the um, brining started. And then you put them in your refrigerator and we found that they taste much better after they have had time to brine for about 48 hours. And then you take them and use them, cut them up more if you like pickle relish, if you just want them in rings to put on your hamburger, hot dogs, tacos, those kind of things. Um, we smoked a roast this weekend and had cold roast beef sandwiches for lunch um, today. And with a little cheddar cheese, mustard, and purple onion pickles, um, they were a huge hit. So I'm just kind of breaking the rings into individual rings. Um, I guess it's making them prettier than anything. Um, just getting them down in there. And one of the large onions makes approximately um, two pints of pickles, pickled onions. So, and you don't want to squish them in so tight that you don't have room for any of the brine because you want that brine to um, be real free in there to get to every piece of the onion and... Um, and they do shrink um, as they brine. Um, we know that, like, this jar was... I mean, the onion has definitely... 
And you can run, if you were canning, you wouldn't run a knife around the jar. You could run a plastic, um, like a plastic knife or something like that down to release any air bubbles, but it is not that important in refrigerator pickles. These will last in your refrigerator for up to two weeks. Um, so try to use them within that time frame. So, and with that, you're gonna want to date, with today's Label. date, um, your jars so that you know, because if your house and your refrigerator is like mine, occasionally it's like, hmm, does anybody remember when we made these? And, I mean, you can look through there and see what it is, but it doesn't hurt to always put what it is, like purple onion pickles. I made them on April 28th, and so I have until whatever two weeks is then, 5th, 7th, like the 12th of um, May that you need to get those used up. And I did just pull out the center, had some eyes starting to grow, so just sorted those out. So for our brine, we're going to start with two cups of water, um, just regular temperature, doesn't have to be cold, hot, just, I just use tap water. And then we're going to add one cup of cider vinegar. And a lot of people say, well, what's the difference between cider vinegar and white vinegar? Cider vinegar is they have pressed the apples, pressed the juice out of them, um, then kind of smush the apples, get the juice, then it ferments through a two fermentation pro step fermentation process. And um, so you're actually, um, this is actually made from apples. And, and it has a very distinct odor or smell. Um, white vinegar is distilled from grain alcohol, so it's a little different product. You can make these pickles with either type of vinegar. If you have your onions ready and you look in the cupboard and you don't have cider vinegar, um, distilled vinegar will work just the same way. A little different flavor and a little different um, aroma. So we're gonna pour our one cup of cider vinegar in. We're going to need two tablespoons of regular granulated sugar. And three teaspoons of kosher salt. And if you watched yesterday, we talked about kosher salt. It's coarsely ground. It's coarser than table salt, not quite as coarse as like coarse sea salt. So um, we're going to use three teaspoons of that, and we need a spoon. Oh, yeah. Because in all our confusion today, we forgot a spoon. So it's kind of like when you're cooking at home, you think you have everything gathered up, and then lo and behold, you don't. So we'll, we'll just dissolve the salt and sugar, and that won't take but just a minute in the vinegar. Make sure it's good and dissolved. And then Erin um, can pour this over her onions. We're going to use a two-part canning lid with a flat and a ring. Um, these will never seal like a canning jar does when you put it through a water bath canner. But to me, this is the easiest way to make sure that they're tightly um, closed and you can see in them. And I think canning jars are a great tool in the kitchen for a lot of things besides actually canning in them. So when we hot water bath can um, and I've made my jam or jelly and I've used the flat once, it needs to be thrown away. If I use it in this instance, yeah. um, can I reuse my flats? Yes, because they have never been heated. So you can save them.
Today we will be posting this recipe on Facebook. And the other thing we're going to post is a vinegar um, chart that kind of goes through every vinegar there is, balsamic, red wine, kind of the uses of them, and um, if there's some substitutions. Oftentimes you want to use a recipe and maybe you don't have balsamic vinegar. What can you use in the place of that? So that will be a helpful um, tool, hopefully, for you as you're doing some cooking at home. And as you guys can see, there's a definite difference in color of today's freshly jarred, and then these were made on Friday. Um, they look pickled, where these look raw. raw. Um, and they are fantastic. Um, we dug into, had to taste test. Um, we made it till Saturday afternoon, so about 24 hours into the pickling process. Um, and they were good. They weren't as good as they were when we tapped into the jar Sunday afternoon um, for a quick snack after we'd been working out in the yard. And they were fantastic. We actually had some um, with our pizza, leftover pizza for supper Sunday evening, just because they had that really nice tang to them and tasted like summer. So it was kind of a fun, um, after we worked outside all day, um, we really enjoy pickles, so this was a fun twist on pickles at our house. Um, and my fiance was super duper excited about his roast beef and pickled onion sandwich for today. So um, they're really fun. They're kind of a fun twist. I know at my house, I buy a purple onion because it's like, oh, I need it, you know, for a recipe, whether it's a, uh, I have a really fun barbecue chicken recipe that calls for purple onion and then I have three quarters of a purple onion left and it's like okay now what do I do with it this is definitely on the list of um, how to use up that purple onion for a fun treat kind of spice up mix up your usual um, routine so and we served them to the branding crew and um, they were gone. So I think that's another testament that, that they're good. So anyway. The with recipe suggests serving them like on tacos. Um, so that would definitely pizza. Yeah, change up the flavors. Um, and I know we've talked a lot about, you know, using different flavors to mix up those same old recipes that maybe after the last couple months we're all getting really sick of. Um, <laughs> We eat tacos at our house a lot because it's quick and easy. Um, so I think this will be a great addition to those to add a fun new flavor, um, just like our taco seasoning, or if you caught us yesterday with the everything bagel um, seasoning, adding flavor um, to a, a new flavor to a favorite dish um, is a great way to kind of liven it up and make it new and exciting again. So. With that, I think we'll sign off for today. Uh, just remember to join Shelly tomorrow at 10 o'clock and Vicki on Thursday and Friday at 10 with some other new and exciting ideas for you. Um, and don't forget to get your FedEx team signed up. Sign ups oh, yeah. are due um, by Friday. We'll kick off the spring season on Saturday. And with this gorgeous spring weather this week, it's a great time to gear up to really enjoy um, some exercise and a fun way to enjoy a little bit different vegetable. So with that, we'll, we'll see you. We'll see you next week.